Hello, hello. I'm back after quite a few uh, weeks, maybe months of a hiatus. It has been a crazy summer and beginning of the school year for me teaching um, in-person uh, classes as well as my kids getting ready to go back to school. But I'm back and I'm going to be doing a nice floral tutorial. Uh, we'll be doing some very simple watercolor flowers. Um, these are really easy to do, very minimal strokes. Um, and brush control, water control, etc. Anyone can do these and I'll show you how to do each of these different flowers as well as the foliage included. So let's get started. I'm going to be using my Kopman watercolors. These are the paints that I most use with my students when I teach in person. This is what I give them to practice with. The Kopman watercolor series are a great kind of entry level um, paint that is going to go a long way for beginners who are learning but not be too um, cheap or entry level um, for them. So I'm using sap green, cadmium yellow pale hue, alizarin crimson, permanent rose, and ultramarine. And really you could get away with just these three colors, the permanent rose, ultramarine, and cadmium yellow to do all of these flowers but I like to make my life a little bit easier and add a little bit more dimension with these other two colors as well. Uh, so let's take those out of the way. You can see I already have mine laid out here. I'm just using a regular old kitchen ceramic plate. Um, and I'll be using my Princeton Velvet Touch size 10 brush for everything that we're going to do here. So I try to keep it really simple for my beginner students using as little paint um, different paint options as possible, showing them how to mix colors, using as few brushes as possible. We do use more than one sometimes, but um, if you can do everything with one, why not do it with one? Um, and then the paper I'm using is going to be Fabriano, um, the student 25% cotton. I do like to teach my students with 25% or higher cotton content. Um, I don't like to do pulp papers, although those are great for practice if you're just learning out Canton XL and things like that. But cotton papers, um, even if you're not getting the most expensive, are really helpful in learning because the paint and water behave very differently on um, cellulose papers uh, versus cotton papers. So let's get started. The first flower, I'm going to be showing you the chrysanthemum, and we're going to be building this flower step by step. This is the most complicated piece in this whole um, bouquet of, fo of florals here and foliage, uh, but it's still very simple. So the first thing we have to do is create our orange, and we're going to be doing that with the alizarin crimson and the pale yellow hue over on our palette here. So taking more yellow than alizarin crimson, so quite a bit of yellow, and then a touch of alizarin crimson until we get this beautiful orange color. And then you can also um, add, if you feel like it's too bright or too kind of creamsicle-y of a color, you can add a tiny bit of our sap green to it, a teeny tiny bit, which will dull it down a little and make it more of a brownish orange. Um, you could definitely make an orange color with your cadmium yellow and your um, permanent rose. Um, if those were the only two colors you had, you didn't have the alizarin crimson, it would be a more of a creamsicle kind of pale orange, um, but you could definitely make it work. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do this flower in some steps here. So. First, starting with the shape, looking at the shape, knowing kind of where you're going, um, building in the basic structure of the shape with these simple brush strokes. I'm just using the tip of my brush and pressing down slightly to the belly of my brush. So the tip is here and then the belly is everything underneath it. So when I press down, I'm going to be using the tip of my brush and pressing down slightly, not all the way like this to get a really wide angle, but just a little bit and dragging that across. Okay, so let's start to build that flower. So the first thing I'm going to do is with the tip of my brush, just pressing slightly down on the belly, I'm gonna to start to 
almost draw out the shape. So putting in sporadic petals to kind of create the shape, my final shape. So I want it to be kind of this bulbous shape that is all the petals are kind of coming to the center here. And from there are fanning out to create the chrysanthemum. And this is the side view, of course, of a chrysanthemum. The, the center view is much more complicated. And then not going too crazy. I am filling it in, but I'm definitely leaving white space in there between some of my brush strokes. We are gonna do a second layer on this. So I'm gonna leave this as it is. So I have my basic shape. This is kind of the underside where the stem meets the flower and then the sides of the flower go up. So while that dries, we're gonna make um, the part where the stem connects to the flower, the stem and the leaves. And then we'll add the second layer onto our petals. All right, so I'm just mixing up some sap green. Now, I already did have sap green on my palette, but the Cotman sap green, green is not my favorite. It's a little bit lighter and paler than I would like for a sap green, but no worries. All you have to do to take some of that paleness, create a little bit more um, uh, desaturated, a little bit browner, a little bit earthier color with the sap green is add a tiny little bit of that alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna take a little more green and activate it, get it nice and active with the water, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. And you can see how it desaturates that pale color and makes it more of an earthy green that I prefer. So if you learn color mixing, you can do a lot with basic colors that you have on hand if you don't have a lot of different colors available to you. I know, I know, everybody loves all of the beautiful tubes of paint when you go into the store and all of the different um, selections. I absolutely do as well. I am guilty of it. I have tons of paint, but I find it's really important to be able to know what to do when you don't have tons of paint available to you. So we're gonna um, start with the base of the stem here. And the part that meets the flower is the widest part. And I'm just kind of dabbing in with the tip of my brush, this wide part of the stem. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And now I'm just pulling it down together, not creating too long of a stem. So you can see it's narrower at the bottom. It's a little bit cone shaped, narrower at the bottom and wider at the top where it meets the flower. And then it comes together and using just the tip of my brush without a lot of pressure at all, making the stem. Now off the stem of these flowers are some um, leaves and these leaves are super simple. And I can show you certainly on here, they're kind of these thinner leaves. And then here, I have some standalone leaves that are these simple kind of one, one brush stroke thin, it's tip, belly and lifting up to the tip to make the point at the end. So we'll start with the tip of our brush and we're just gonna draw out a line where we want our leaf to go. And the better you get at this, you'll be able to do it all in kind of one fluid motion. So this is where I want my leaf to go. I've drawn out the stem of the leaf. So about halfway up this, I am going to put the tip of my brush back down and I'm gonna press down with pressure to make a nice wide stroke so I'm like on the side of my brush and then I'm going to lift up ever so slowly to the tip. Super simple, just like that. And I'm gonna put another one on the other side and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna actually turn my paper around so I can do it the same as I did on the other side. So um, I'm gonna do this more in one fluid motion. So tip, belly, tip. And we have this lovely area that is a darker color than here. I love that look when doing it like this where you get a very organic kind of feel to your leaves. So one more in one motion all together. So tip, drag it along, pressure, and then lift up pressure. 
And there we go. So now this part is pretty dry up here. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and with my orange to add some more dimension to this flower, I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson, a little bit more yellow, I'm gonna make some more of that orange and I'm leaving it a little bit redder, a little bit more alizarin crimson heavy and I am gonna take some of that green to desaturate it. So this is more of a very red brown color or a very um, brown orangish color, however you wanna classify it. Maybe a little bit more yellow there to warm it up. There we go. So this is a darker color and it's gonna go on top of this. And I'm going to do basically the same thing, but I'm not gonna cover up every stroke I already did because I want some of that lighter tone to shine through or to come peek through in different areas. So I am going to add it, you know, over the entire flower. Um, I don't want to just do like one little section. I want to do the whole thing, but leaving space in between. And again, we're just using the tip and a little pressure. And we're going to do like one petal kind of falling off on the side here, coming out, opening up. There we go. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I love the dimension I'm getting. We'll see how it goes when it dries. So the great thing about watercolor is that you can add several layers often to something. Um, and the more layers you add, the more dimension something gets. Now there is overworking something when you keep adding and adding and adding and it starts to get muddy or the paper starts to break down, but that usually takes several layers when you're doing something like this. So you can see here um, on some of these flowers, I even added in some straight alizarin crimson in some areas to get even more depth. Not a lot, just a few little spots. Um, so you can definitely go in and experiment and add more and more layers here this one as well has quite a few layers in it that i added and very thin petals that i did okay so that is our chrysanthemum yay all right so moving on right next to it we're going to do the other more complicated flower that has more than one step to it um, which is the lavender now, lavender uh, is one of my favorite flowers in late summertime. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And you can see fields and fields of lavender often. I'm in the Northeast um, in the US and we have tons of lavender everywhere. And apparently it's good at repelling um, mosquitoes and ticks. So great to have lots of lavender around. So let's see, for us, we are going to make our lavender color. I am going to use our permanent rose this time, so the more pinky color, and our ultramarine. So putting these two colors together makes a beautiful purple tone. And you can make your lavender more of a pinkish purple or more of a bluish purple. I tend to find that most lavender that I'm familiar with has this more bluish purple hue to it. So I'm going to make mine a little bluer. All right. So using the lavender shape. So the lavender shape is literally a long cone ish shaped flower. Um, and it's actually a bunch of tiny little flowers built along this stem upwards to make this cone shape. Now a lot of lavender, sometimes I paint it and I paint it very thin at the top, very cone shaped. That's not actually what lavender looks like. It is more kind of square or boxy at the top than sometimes I paint it like in, let me see if I can find one, in here. So you can see these are much more cone shaped. They're pointed at the end, but you know what? It's my painting. I can do what I want. You can do what you want. We're not paying, painting hyper-realistic here. Um, so if that's how you want to paint your lavender, go for it. Um, but this one we will do a little bit more boxy at the top. All right. So starting with, you can use a light pencil line if you need to help 
whoops, I'm dropping things back here. Um, if you need to help kind of keep yourself um, restrained so you're not kind of going all over the place, you can paint in a light pencil line that you'll erase later or put it in and then use a kneaded eraser. Love these things. You can use as stress relievers and then erase that line mostly so you can barely, barely see it, but it just gives you a guide to kind of stay within if you think you're gonna be kind of going off the rails. Now with the lavender, it's just these little marks with the tip and slight pressure on the brush. And I will say that as you go down, you're kind of creating these levels. You don't want to you don't want to get too crazy, but you're leaving these gaps in between. So like this is a level, this is a level, this is a level. Here's another kind of level or cluster of flowers and then another one. But you don't want to get too regimented about this or you're going to have like perfect lines across. You want to mess them up a little bit, but you're leaving some gaps for space where you're going to see the stem through the flowers or buds on the stem. Um, just mixing up a little more purple here. And then you can go back into some of the areas that you've already painted. I do this and I just drop in a little bit more color over top, um, not in the whole area. I still want to keep those white spaces, but um, I like to add in those drops because it gives it more dimension. So that little spot will be a little bit darker than the spot next to it because this is a round shape. It's got light reflecting on it. They're flowers, they're organic shapes. So, you know, they're not going to be all a perfect solid color. So there, now I've created our cone shape. It's got a little bit of flower sticking out over here. It's not perfect on the sides, but that's how flowers grow. You don't want them to be perfect and regimented or they won't look natural. And then taking some of that same sap green that I've already mixed up with that little bit of alizarin crimson added to it to desaturate it. Just making a little bit more over here. Sorry for the mixing delay. So as this is drying, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit so these colors don't bleed too much, but we'll start with the stem. So the stem is very simple. Just bring your stem down. And then lavender has these like very almost spiky little rough leaves off of it, almost like really big, um, like really big rosemary or like I don't want to say pine needles because they're not that exaggerated, but they aren't like the full broad leaf. They're these little tiny leaves. So just adding a few of those on. If you want, you don't have to go crazy. And then when this is dry enough, mine is probably not dry enough yet, but for the sake of camera time, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to find these white spots and just drag my stem through it, skipping the spots, not worrying about it if you don't see very much of it. There you go. And you can't even see it that well on camera, but just adding that line, just adding that suggestion of a line right there is gonna make the whole thing kind of come together and feel like one solid piece that they are connected, that the flowers are connected. Oops, I messed up this, I hit it with my hand, I think. So now we got some really funky <laughs> looking little leaves up here. That's okay. All right, so those are our two most complicated flowers in this bunch, our lavender and the chrysanthemum. Now we're gonna do some of these other leaves. So I added in more of this foliage, so standalone foliage, where I added in these long one, kind of one uh, pass stroke uh, leaves. Now these are a little wider, and we're gonna do these and then also these little filler flowers. So I guess we could add them right on here. No need to get another piece of paper. 
So let's do the little filler flowers first. So these little filler flowers are like tiny little um, rosebuds or maybe some other little wildflower you might see. They don't really have a name or very specific flower. You can do them in yellow, you can do them in pink, you can do them in orange, depending on kind of what you're painting. Blue, you can definitely do them in blue. I'm using the rose color and I'm adding a tiny bit of this purple I made to it. Not a lot, but just enough to deepen it down to like a magenta color versus this lighter pink rose. You can definitely keep it in that light pink rose um, value, but because these are all um, kind of these earthier tones, I thought a little bit deeper magenta might be, might go with these a little bit better. Again, these flowers are super simple. All right, tip of our brush, press down. It's almost like stamping. There it is, there's the bud. And you're just going to place them in groups. Add a little more water to my brush, let it run out. You can let some of them touch. They don't all have to be perfect individual little petals. But there you go. There's that group of flowers here. We'll do one more. So stamping down. And you know, it's okay if you kind of stamp down and it's not quite the right shape, you can definitely take another stroke. So if I go down, I'm like, mm, I want that to be a little wider at the bottom. Let's add a little bit more to it. But really using the shape of our brush, you can do really tiny ones to just guide this process. And then step two for these is adding in stems, of course. And these stems, do not think too hard about them. You're just gonna find the base of a flower and the very tip of your brush. You can have some of the stems come together in one big stem. You might not even get to go all the way down with one because it runs into another flower. Just go to there. And then I also like to just add little flicks of some foliage kind of coming out around them as I do them. And when you incorporate this into a bouquet where there's a lot going on, these are great little fillers. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to look perfect, but they do the job. They make a bouquet nice and full. They can add a pop of a different contrasting color that you need to add to kind of bring the composition all together because they really don't have to be a specific color. They don't have to be yellow. They can be blue or they can, or I'm sorry, they don't have to be magenta. They could be yellow or blue or whatever color you need to balance it out. All right, and then lastly, our other leaf. So we did these ones here and you can do them as standalones, but we also have this broader leaf. So I did it in this bouquet in a very light grayish blue color. And how I got that was with ultramarine. So I'm using my ultramarine here. Now the ultramarine is a very um, reddish blue. And without getting too crazy into color theory, when you add green to red, it makes a brown or a gray color. So we're gonna add a tiny bit of green to this blue. And because there's so much red in ultramarine, it's going to interact with that red color and make this more of a gray. So tiny little bit of this sap green and you can see how that got like so gray very quickly. Okay, instead of going straight um, to brown or or like a blue green color, it's not going to turn like a beautiful blue green, like turquoisey color because this has so much red in it. It's gonna go gray. It's aged well. It's a beautiful gray color. All right, so let's start with these leaves. So same concept. I like to put these leaves sometimes on a more curvy stem or vine. So I'm just gonna start with that. And with the tip of my brush, kind of every other, I like to do these in a every other um, zigzaggy pattern. Now, very similar to this leaf here, tip of our brush, bring it down. 
Okay, so we've done one side of the leaf, and now we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing to make this nice round leaf. Just gonna make a little bit more of this blue gray. Okay, one, two, one, two. Do a little one up here at the top. And you can turn your paper, especially if you're trying not to put your hand in your paint, but just be careful with your stroke. Going in a different direction can be tricky. All right, there we go. So we have our beautiful kind of silvery blue, um, broader, wider leaves that add to our composition. And now we can use all of these things in combination with each other to create um, these great little, um, let's zoom out here a little bit more, these great little compositions. Um, these would be great as paintings on their own, on um, cards or postcards. There's a lavender. These are some examples from past class that I did. And the students did a great job with these. So. I hope you enjoyed this, breaking this down into these different flowers. Thank you so much for joining me again. I will have more content out more regularly on this channel, but enjoy yourself painting some of these fall foliage um, or fall flowers, this beautiful orange chrysanthemum and lavender and everything in between. Um, I'm Shana Searcy and thank you for watching. Take care.